Sometimes you'll be asked about the effect of putting a salt into a solution and seeing what the resulting change of the pH is, whether it becomes acidic, basic, or whether you don't really see a resulting pH change because of that. And the way to assess these is to do something that is commonly used in organic chemistry, but can also be very helpful in general chemistry, and that is by examining the conjugate acids and bases of the components of that salt. Because remember, a salt is something that is just comprised of two ions. And those ions will either be acidic, basic, or neutral. And the best way to evaluate that is by looking at what they are the conjugates of. Because remember that strong acids have neutral conjugate bases. And strong bases have neutral conjugate acids. Whereas a weak acid or base has a conjugate that is weak in the other direction. So a weak acid will have a weak conjugate base, but that conjugate base is still somewhat basic. And a weak base will have a weak conjugate acid, but it is still somewhat acidic. And so essentially what you do with these is look at whether this is a component of a strong base or acid, and then you can evaluate what's left in your solution. So we'll go through a few examples here. First we'll start with uh, NaCl, sodium chloride. Now sodium should look familiar because sodium is the conjugate acid of NaOH. So this Na plus here, Na plus there, is the conjugate acid of sodium hydroxide, NaOH. And so this will be completely useless because NaOH is a strong base Na plus is not a strong acid. It's a totally useless neutral acid. Whereas Cl minus is something that you might encounter as the conjugate base of HCl. And because it is the conjugate base of a strong acid, remember HCl is one of the strong acids, the conjugate base of that strong acid will be totally neutral. It will have no real base ability. And so Cl minus here will not be very effective as a base in this solution. And so what we have are two neutral compounds, and that will lend us toward a pH of around seven, a fairly neutral pH when you put NaCl into a solution. Now let's look at something else. Here we have potassium carbonate, K2CO3. And K2 will yield two K plus ions. And remember that K plus is the conjugate base of K, or conjugate acid of KOH. KOH is potassium hydroxide, and that is one of the strong bases. And because KOH is a strong base, K plus will not be useful as an acid. It will be completely neutral. Now on the other hand, CO3 two minus is the conjugate base of HCO3 minus, which is not a strong acid. And because HCO3 minus, or bicarbonate, is not a strong acid, that means that it's a weak acid, and a weak acid will have a weak conjugate base. So this will be slightly basic. It won't be extremely basic, but it will be basic enough that if you were to put potassium carbonate into a solution of pure water, what you'll end up with is a slight increase in the pH because what you have remaining is something that is slightly basic and something here that is completely useless as an acid. K plus is not a good acid and that's because it's the conjugate acid of KOH which is a very strong base. Strong bases always have neutral conjugates and that means that the conjugate acid of a strong base will not be acidic and it will not have any influence in lowering the pH of that solution. So this is how to think about the effect of salts in aqueous solution. Look at the conjugates and decide whether one of these species is a conjugate of something that would be classified as a strong acid or base or whether it's the conjugate of something weak. Remember strong acids and bases have neutral conjugates that aren't very good at doing their job as an acid or base. Whereas a weak acid or base will have a conjugate that is weak, but that means that it still has some ability to act as a base or acid when you put that in solution.